In this tutorial, we're going to talk about color and using the RGB value in P5.js. So if you have ever been in your science class and maybe try to put your phone under a microscope, you might have seen an image like the one on the screen. Essentially, when you magnify a screen, such as the screen of your phone or the screen of your laptop or computer monitor, what you are going to see is pixels. And, and each of these pixels are made out of three different kinds of colors. And these colors are red, green, and blue. So now you might ask, then why is it that I can see so many more colors on my screen beyond just red, green, and blue? And the reason for that is because each of these little tiny pixels can actually shift um, between different brightness from going to completely dark to absolutely bright. <laughs> and, and the result of this modulation of different brightness and darkness mixes different pixels together when you look at the screen from afar. So there is an illusion of different kinds of colors. So as you can see on this chart, um, the, the kinds of modulation you can create for each of the RGB channel is between 0 and 255. And there's actually a whole complex um, reasons for why the number is 255. Um, I will link a video here so you can learn more about it if you're curious, but it's not directly related to our tutorial right now. So let's take a look at how do we reproduce this red color that's on the background in P5.js. If we go take a look at the reference, and by the way, reference is really your best friend, this web page right here, you probably want to keep it open as a second tab along with your P5.js editor at all time. So I'm going to take a look at the background feature. So as you can see, the background doesn't only take one value, it also takes three value. And these three value each represent R, G, and B. So if I want um, a screen that is completely red without any green and any blue value, um, what I would have to do is giving the first value, that R value, a maximum of 255. So if I type 255, comma zero, comma zero here, and if I hit play, there you go. That's, that's our red screen over there. So if I want to change my background to a green color, I have to type 0, 255, 0. And the same goes to my blue background, right? I'll have to shift this to 0, 0, 255. So the ability to essentially, you know, have three channel of RGB colors and 255 numbers, um, essentially it's actually 256 because there's also the number zero uh, to play with, actually um, turns out to provide us around, I think it's um, 16.7 millions of color choices. So, so that's pretty incredible when you think about it. However, how can one possibly know, you know, like if I want that tone of like nice blue violet color, how, how can I possibly know what combination of number is that? So this is where um, online tools that different kinds of people have made um, coming really handy. Here is just one of the example for a tool that you can use by W3School. Um, it's called the HTML Color Picker. So this is where you can, you know, go over to the site and sort of pick a color that's like within the range of the kind of color you're looking for. 
And here, as you can, you can choose like a different darkness, a different shade. And you can see, aha, this is the RGB value here that I need to copy over, right? So, so no one is expecting you to remember or know exactly what number combination it's going to be. That is something that you essentially just look up and find. So I just showed you how to change the background color. Um, but actually, I want to also be able to change the color of my shapes. So here I'm going to draw a ellipse real quick. And, um, and I can type, I'm going to draw a big circle and it's going to be in the center of my canvas. Um, I can write 200 to, to bring that to the center, but I'm actually today going to teach you a new way um, to, to place a circle into the center of the canvas. And that new way is using something called width. So you can type width divided by two. And you can type height divided by two. So, so what is this width and height? Um, what, what width means here um, when you type it into the ellipse? It's saying that take the value of my canvas width, right? So here's my canvas width and height. Take the value of my, uh, the, the width of my canvas, which is 400 right now, and divided it by two. So the result of this is going to be 200. And the same idea applies to height. Take the height of my canvas and divide it by two. <laughs> so, so it's going to always be in the center, this ellipse, no matter what the size of your canvas would be. The next thing I'm going to do is giving it a width and a height. So here I'm going to type 300, 300, and I'm going to hit play, and there you go, a big nice circle uh, in the center of my screen. By default in P5, all shapes would have a white fill. So, so this is something we have to change, right? Um, so if you go over to the reference again, the feature you want to find is something called fail. So if you go to fail, you'll see that, oh, fail is basically sharing the same kind of syntax as my background. Um, it would take an RGB value in there. So here I'm actually going to type in fail and I'm actually going to make it um, 025525. And I'm gonna hit play. So, so essentially, um, RGB, the mix of green and blue, is going to give us this beautiful cyan color. Okay, and notice that rem if you remember from the last tutorial uh, when I talk about drawing order, it's very important that you put the feel, the color um, set up for your ellipse and for your shapes before the drawing of the shape. So, so just make sure that color setting always go before shape. Another cool thing I wanted to talk about um, relating to RGB is that there is actually a fourth value here that is optional to type in, um, but if you type it in, you're going to be able to control the alpha channel. And the alpha channel essentially just is a fancy way to say transparency. So let's say, and it's also um, on, the, on a sliding scale of 0 to 255. So let's say if I over here put, let's say, 120 as my fourth alpha channel value, I am going to see a slightly transparent circle because and you know now now the now the alpha channel value has been shifted to about half um, okay i'm gonna bring this back and the next thing i want to talk about is stroke you can see that there is a black stroke around my circle um, it might be desired but oftentimes it's not so if you don't want any stroke inside of your sketch you would in your setup write no stroke I'm going to hit play and you can see that the stroke has disappeared. Um, 
Okay, let's actually create a couple more shapes to make this drawing a little more complex. So here I'm actually going to um, draw a rectangle. So the rectangle is going to be 200, 0, 30 height. And I'm going to hit play. There you go. And I'm going to make another rectangle. And it's going to be 80, 0, 30 height. OK. And what we are seeing right here is that, you know, the the background color is still purple and the feel essentially gets carried over into the next shape, right? So if you want to assign a new color to the rectangles themselves, you have to create, you have to create another color setting. You have to put another um, color value in there. So over here, I'm actually going to make the rectangle 255, 255, zero. And I'm going to hit play, and there's my, my yellow bars. What if I want to have a stroke, but I don't want the stroke to be black? So what I can do here is um, go into the stroke feature. And you can see that essentially, if you want to change the color of the stroke, you have to type in the stroke feature. So I'm going to copy this and bring it let's say um, over here so and i'm going to turn it into a different color so what if it's just red okay so you can see now that i um added a stroke in there um, i'm actually gonna make my stroke bigger and that is um, stroke weight so if I make my stroke bigger and when I type five, it means five pixel. Um, this is in pixel value. It's going to, you know, like enlarge the, the size of my stroke all around. So, so here's the interesting thing that I'm observing right now. Even though I put my stroke and my stroke weight right before my rectangle, it's still affecting my ellipse. And the reason for that is because the draw function executes in a loop. So essentially what is happening is that the draw function starts drawing a background and it draws the ellipse <laughs> and it draws, a, it assigns a stroke and a stroke weight to the rectangle and then it returns to line seven and continue to execute. So because it's drawn in a loop, your stroke is going to get carried over um, to your ellipse um, because the, the looping motion is really fast. So that very initial frame, that very initial execution, um, when, when the ellipse doesn't have a stroke, you have already missed when you, when you play it. So, so what you have to do here, if I just want to have um, stroke around my rectangle, is I want to take my no stroke from my setup which can only get executed once, right? And I want to put it right before my ellipse. So if I hit play here, you can see that now whenever it loops, it knows to assign no stroke and, and fail of cyan color to the ellipse and to assign the red stroke and the yellow fail to the rectangle. I hope that explains generally how creating colored fail and colored strokes work in P5. The next thing I want to address is how RGB actually works. So if you have ever used watercolor or you know used paint to draw something, the experience of that is that the more color you add on top of each other, the darker um, your, your drawing becomes, your painting becomes, right? So if I add red on top of blue, I get purple, but then also if I add yellow, if I add green on top of them, it would, it would essentially get, make the color darker and darker and murkier. Um, in the world of RGB, that is not the case. And the way it functions is something called the additive color. 
So you see a red here, and that is of 255, comma, 0, comma, 0 value, and green value there, and blue value there, all at its maximum sort of um, limit of the color. And the intersection of the three actually produces white. <laughs> so, so that is something that's very unique and special about RGB. And what that means is if I want to create a white color inside of my P5 sketch, I would have to type 255, 255, 255. Because essentially the three colors added together are white. And so sometimes when you see in example code, when someone had only put in one value for the feel or the background or the stroke, Essentially, that is just a shorthand way of writing, you know, 255 without repeating it three times. So whenever you create values on the RGB channels that are identical to each other, it's always going to be on the slider of the grayscale. So you can just write a single number between 0 and 255 if you want a color on this slider. Okay, the last thing I am going to do, and um, I'm actually going to bring my cyan color back here, 0255255, um, is I want to show you something called the blend mode. So as you can see, RGB by its nature is additive but we can actually use the blend mode to simulate other kind of color mixing technique. So if I look for blend mode here, um, and actually if you have ever used Photoshop or Illustrator, these concepts might not be very new to you. Um, by using this feature called blend mode, you can actually mix this different colors in different ways. There's a whole lot of description, a whole different lots of ways of mixing the colors using blend mode. So I'm actually just going to try one of them. So I'm going to take this and I am going to put my blend mode in my setup. And I'm going to click play and you can see that this blend mode essentially find the lightest value of each color and mix them in a particular way. If you want to create a different effect, um, such as, let's say I'm going to use the darkest, which only lets the darkest color succeed. It is going to create a very different kinds of mixing outcome. So this is a fun way to mix more color and create unexpected color palette by using blend mode in your P5.